Hi, I'm John, and welcome to Smart Ways to Gain YouTube Subscribers, Part 8. And for those unfamiliar with this series, it's videos that basically focus on how to make better videos from YouTube, whether it be video quality or the prep work or things that you need to do or think about while you're making a video, um, how to maximize your number of views, and just generally make higher quality videos. Um, it's real basic stuff. Most of it's free. And um, it's been a long time since I made one of these videos, and I've learned a lot of new things, and I want to pass those along, and hopefully it'll help you too. So let's take a look at part one. Number one. Viewer behavior. Okay, there's a site called TubeMogul, and um, they are a kind of professional online uh, Nielsen rating type um, agency, and you can anyone can upload a link to their channel, create an account, and it will track the amount of views that you get. It's a lot like the YouTube Insight section, but their interface is a little bit better, and they are very serious about what it takes to make good online uh, video, and they have a blog, and every once in a while they release uh, studies of their own um, information gathering about viewer behavior. And one of the more interesting studies that came out a couple months ago was the average duration at which people watch videos on YouTube. And the numbers were actually quite shocking. That, in fact, one third of all viewers stop watching a, an average video after 30 seconds. And one half of all viewers stop watching after one minute. And that goes on and on and on down to less than 10% of people watch a video more than five minutes long or watch video five minutes or longer. And that was, to me, was very discouraging because almost all my videos are that long. Now, that doesn't say that subscribers don't watch that long. That's an average viewer. That's a mixture of subscribers and non-subscribers. People clicking mo probably mostly at random than people that are subscribed for most people because most of your views ultimately come from random people or off the Internet, especially popular videos. So um, what does this mean? What, what, what can we learn from this? And I think that what it teaches us right away is get to the important stuff in your video as soon as possible. Start out with a bang, because if you save your stuff for the middle or later part of the video, obviously by these numbers, a person's never even going to hear it. They're going to click on through. It's part of the psychology of watching online video. It's very unfortunate that this is the way it is, but use this information the best you can. Get out there, get in people's um, face with the best possible uh, topic or the best information or ideas that you have about a certain topic when you're making this video. Really put front load all your stuff as much as possible because then that will uh, basically allow them to buy into the idea of like, hey, I'm going to watch the rest of this video. Because if you can get someone to watch your entire video, that increases the chances of saying, hmm, what, are, what other things that this person is making? Maybe they'll be interested in me. And that's, bam, that's when you got a new subscriber more times than not. Because if they don't watch, watch the duration of one of your videos, most likely they're not going to bother to check out your channel or check out any of your videos. Number two, high definition video. A few months back, to my surprise, YouTube started supporting 720p high definition video, and that is video that's 1280 pixels by 720 pixels in resolution. And it's great. Um, it's by far the highest quality uh, video that's available on YouTube. Um, it's completely free for everyone to use. Um, just have to upload at that resolution. Um, it's great too because ca cameras now, high definition cameras, um, like yeah, the Flip Minnow HD, or in this one, it's a Kodak version, um, are pretty cheap. They're around $150 to $250, depending on the make and model on the low end. Um, so, and uh, Windows Vista supports uh, rendering out. Uh, Movie Maker supports high definition videos. So, really, the cost isn't all that uh, prohibitive at all, and um, it's completely free, of course. So um, it's a great option for people to have. But it's unfortunately, it's a good news, bad news situation. There are a few things that are, um, I consider, major drawbacks to doing high definition video on YouTube. And um, let me go down the list real quick. First and foremost, um, high definition video requires um, about 2.3 megabits per second internet connection, um, which is about the US average. Unfortunately, um, that's only half the US on average has that type of connection. And if they have something slower than that, the video will ultimately play, but it, it, it will not stream real time. It will halt, it will stop, it will have to buffer again. And that makes for a pretty miserable experience for most people um, that want to watch high definition video. So that's a huge negative. Um, right there. Um, the second of all is that um, I have a about a three-year-old laptop. It's not powerful enough to render high-definition video on YouTube. It runs, it just chugs, it's like a slideshow, um, basically unwatchable. Um, so right, those two things right there are going to be prohibitive for 
uh, I don't know, half, maybe even more of the audience out there that maybe would be watching your video probably will not be watching it in high def. And they'll be watching, which is the third part, or the third drawback, and that is the standard definition quality. There's two versions. There's the high def quality, and then there's the default standard definition quality, which is extremely low quality. The, the difference is probably 20 times um, the resolution or bit rate, or 10 times the, the bit rate. Um, and so that means you're going to have an extremely muddy and ugly looking video as the first video that you see because the video the video viewer has to click the high def option and then it has to rebuffer the high def video to begin watching and that's really the other drawback is that it requires an extra step for the user to have to click high def all the time and a lot of users aren't going to be able to do that so i'm not really a big fan of the high def videos um I mean, they're great if you have all these things. You have a fast computer, you have a fast connection. Um, you don't mind clicking um, on the high def every time a high def video comes up. I'm afraid that people are kind of lazy or don't know that there's a high def version and they end up watching the worst quality version, so you've wasted all this time. Um, there are excellent alternatives. Um, there is a high quality widescreen version, which is like high def, but it's much smaller resolution, but it is, requires much less bandwidth to watch. And I would recommend using that. Um, the resolution of that is 640 by 360 resolution, 16 by 9 aspect ratio, same aspect ratio as high def. Um, upload your videos at that at a very high bit rate and it will look excellent. Um, so that's kind of my opinion about high def. Um, this may change over time. Um, the state of YouTube video is always kind of in flux or always tweaking parameters and changing things. So this may get better as time moves on. But right now, it's just not really ready for prime time, in my opinion. Number three, spice up your channel. Okay, there's two ways to really spice up your channel, and one is the channel icon. Um, you should definitely select a picture that you have taken yourself and not use a video thumbnail. The video thumbnails tend to be of fairly low quality, image quality. They tend to be taken kind of at random. They're usually not the best looking um, image. Uh, there's a website called dailybooth.com that allows you to snap pictures with your webcam. It's really easy to use. And use that and upload that image as your channel icon instead of using a video thumbnail. Um, easy way to draw attention to your channel. Remember, anytime you leave a channel comment, your channel icon shows up right next to your comment. Um, a lot of times I'll click on channels just because the channel icon looked interesting to me. Um, second of all, and maybe more importantly, is the channel background. Um, you can change the channel background of your YouTube homepage um, or your channel page, I should say. And it's uh, there's a website called ytlayouts.net that offers over 100 different very high quality professionally done YouTube, dedicated YouTube backgrounds that are quite professional looking and really can make your channel pop. And not only do they give you the background, they give you the proper YouTube color scheme so you can edit your channel's uh, main windows and text to best match the background that they give you. So both these things are completely free and it's really easy to do within less than probably 30 minutes worth of work. You can make your channel page look much more professional than the default settings. So that's about it for part eight. So until next time, take care. Okay, this is a little bit of a bonus feature I just wanted to throw on at the very end. People ask me what cameras I use and what the pipeline I use to make the videos that I that I do and achieve the quality that I do achieve, although certainly people have better quality than me on YouTube. Um, what I found is, first and foremost, there's a free program offered by Microsoft, um, assuming that you're running, running Windows XP or Windows Vista, and it's called Windows Media Encoder. It's an extremely empower, powerful transcoder, and also it's a powerful webcam capture tool. It basically takes the raw um, abilities of the drivers, because there's a uniform driver system that all webcams use, and allows you to tweak each individual one of those settings, set the compression rate, um, do many things that the webcam software itself that comes with the webcam cannot do or doesn't offer. And um, I found that by tweaking all these settings, um, it's a fairly complicated tool. I would not recommend it unless you were really kind of hell-bent on the absolute best video and really want to roll up your sleeve and deal with a lot of technical aspects. So unless you, so in, unless you're technically mind, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Um, the webcam I use is I'm really impressed with. It's about a $75 webcam. It's, it's a Logitech uh, QuickCam uh, 
Pro 9000. Um, you can buy them on Amazon, like I said, for about $75. Um, but the great thing about the Windows Media Encoder is, is I like the audio quality of my older webcam. And it, actually, you can split. You can use the webcam's uh, microphone off one webcam and the video off another. That's how powerful the Windows Media Encoder uh, software package is. And like I said, it's completely free. And um, it's not easy to use. It's not very intuitive. It's not designed to be intuitive. It's kind of designed to be kind of a professional web capturing piece of software. Um, but you can do a lot of crazy things with it. I can record in 4 by 3 aspect ratio, 16 by 9. I can use I can get an incredibly high capture rate off the webcam that the Logitech software does not do whatsoever. Um, so that's kind of how I, I, I was forced to learn it because my Logitech software is kind of so poor and I can get achieve easily double the uh, quality off of uh, tweaking all the settings and various aspects of it. So that's um, kind of the basic pipeline. I can um, basically capture off video off one webcam, audio after, off of another, and um, it's a really great solution once you have it set up. So I just wanted to give people kind of an idea of what my pipeline looks like, and um, that's about it.